Countries around the world have different systems in every sphere of life. This applies to the educational systems as well. There are some similarities and some differences to the educational systems around the world just like in everything else. It also depends on variables like what type of academic path you're taking and what field and which degree program within that field you're choosing. In this video, I'm going to tell you about just one very important rule regarding the structure of a bachelor's degree program in biotechnology at a German university and try to explain how important that one single rule can be. The undergrad system for biotechnology that I'm going to walk you through can also be valid for similar interdisciplinary fields in Germany as well. The degree programs for bachelors in Germany are six to seven semesters long. But depending on your university and your degree program, in most cases, the bachelor's degree program in biotechnology is seven semesters in total just like in most countries. Each semester accounts for 30 credit points, also known as ECTS, which stands for European Credit Transfer and Accumulation System. It's also a system to divide the workload in each semester for students. Here in Germany, depending on which state and university you're at, you might have a degree program that is classified into two parts. What I mean by that is that here in Germany, we have a six to seven semesters long bachelor's that is classified into two parts. The first part is called Grundstudium and the second part is called the Hauptstudium. These both are obviously German words, so what do these words mean and what do they stand for? Grundstudium means basic studies if you translate it word to word which includes the first four semesters of your degree program. In some cases, it might be three, and it's mostly the case when your degree program is six semesters in total and not seven. And Hauptstudium means the main studies, which includes the three or four semesters, depending on whether it's a six or a seven semesters degree program. So what purpose do these both parts serve? The purpose of this division into basic and main parts serves the administration of the university more than it serves the students. But as a whole, it does have a positive effect. But it can be annoying and hard for students at times, and here's why. So the thing is, if a student hasn't successfully completed all the modules in the first part, the Grundstudium part, in the first three to four semesters, he or she might not be allowed to attempt any exams or modules uh, or to complete the modules from the second part. That means you have to have all the modules completed in order to be able to go on to the next semester in the Hauptstudium, the main part, the second part. The crazy thing is, even if you have only one module left from the first part, you're not allowed an attempt to write an exam from the second part. Well, in most cases, they do make exceptions if you have like only one smaller module left. But the rule is, if you have all the modules completed from the first part, then you're allowed to go into the second part. So why is it good to have this rule? And doesn't it put a lot of pressure on students and sometimes maybe waste a semester or two or even more when, for example, someone has only two or a few relatively smaller modules left? The answer obviously is yes, but if you look at it from the university's perspective, many students, at least here in Germany, I would say like 30 to 40 or in some cases even more, just drop out because they realize that biotechnology in this case or, or their degree program isn't for them. So that group of students doesn't have to be in the labs or in important projects where there is always a limited room or in some cases, uh, in case of projects, for example, a limited uh, vacancies for supervision. So it is better to screen out those who are not that serious or students who don't want to continue that path, in this case, biotechnology anymore for some reason, or someone who is not sure whether or not he or she wants to drop out for something else. That way, the administration spares some spots for students who are serious about their studies and who could use the limited spots offered by the university in a productive and more efficient way. I know it sounds bad, but from the university's point of view, it's better in many ways. 
Same applies to students who want to continue but cannot pass every single module because some parts of the program is causing them problems and they can't pass that subject. And I don't know how it's in other countries, but here in Germany, we only have three attempts to pass an exam. If it's an exam, it's three. If it's a, a presentation or a project or seminar, just three attempts. If you cannot pass a module in three attempts, you're exmatriculated. And I should mention that most of the labs, the practical work, begin a bit later in your studies. You might have some practical and lab work in the second and third semester, but they are relatively speaking the easy ones. Mostly the more complicated labs and projects start from the third or fourth semester. So if someone is having huge problems in a module or two, he or she might not be able to pass that exam in given attempts, which are three for each module. And that might be the reason that they get exmatriculated at let's say, um, at, uh, in fourth semester. So in that case, for instance, if that person has taken part in a three-week lab for a subject and still gets exmatriculated, because he or she could not pass an exam. So from university's point of view, that spot was a total waste of time and resources like um, supervision uh, during that lab work, uh, cost of material used in the lab, and things like lab report correction by the professor, etc. during these three weeks. So the spot in the lab was a complete waste, which could have been offered to someone who could finish their studies. So here, for example, it is better to screen out students who can't get through anyway, which is pretty unfortunate actually. And I should mention that this rule is mostly for students in bachelor's degree programs. Degree structures for masters is pretty standard, just like everywhere else. So in masters, you don't have to worry about a rule like that. As I mentioned before, some just get exmatriculated this way. And I think it's better when it happens in early semesters because that way you haven't wasted that much of time. And for the university, as I mentioned, the vacant spots stay open for students who already have crossed some sort of a threshold and who have proven that they are serious enough to invest more and get through and can use that to continue and finish their studies at some point rather than someone who just can't finish their studies. So. It's bad, it's unfortunate, but you know, it makes more sense. And in many cases, there's like a final exam at the end of the first part. It's like a final exam for the first part, but that's not always the case. It's very much degree program dependent and not every field requires you to pass an exam for the transition between the first and the second part of your degree program. Luckily, I didn't have this rule at my university because I myself struggled with some modules. <laughs> And many others don't, but many do have this rule in place. And I would say most of the universities do have this rule. But I did have other rules for my bachelor's degree program, like I had to collect at least 2.5 credit points uh, per year, which accounts for passing at least one exam for a module. And I had to pass a pre-module exam, which sometimes was a subject from a previous semester, in order to be able to attempt an exam for a specific subject or a lab in the coming or you know a future semester and i also had to have completed specific modules and um, have certain number of credit points in the bank in order to register for my internship which was pretty obvious i think most of the students have this rule but still i had that uh, which i might make a separate video about in the future let's see i don't know the above mentioned is not the only reason for the first and second part transition requirement rule this rule also serves other purposes. As I mentioned, Grundstudium, the first part, the basic part, as the name says it, is also there to ensure that you have the basics covered for the field. But it's not a simple division of your program. There's a reason why the programs are classified. Although the Grundstudium, the first part, the basic part, is really important, it is less interesting in my opinion and by less interesting, I don't at all mean that it's less important because sometimes it can be more important than the second part, which I mentioned earlier, you know, because of the rule to complete the first part in order to move on to the second part. And because it's there to cover and prepare you for the second part, it's simply less interesting because it's the basics, which you already have heard many times at that point. And because there's less practical lab work or uh, less exposure to new things in your field, which you will have more 
in the higher semesters in the second part. So that's why, in my opinion, it's less interesting, but not less important. It's as important and sometimes more important than the second part. And in the second part, the main studies part, is structured in a way that students get to practice and apply the knowledge that they have acquired in the previous semesters and to deepen the knowledge that they have acquired so that they're able to consolidate their methodical competence that they have learned in the field in previous semesters. It would be wrong to say that only the second part decides the direction of your degree program because the first part is just as important as the second. But if you compare the different biotechnological degree programs, you will come to realize that the first part of biotechnology undergrads program, mostly the three to four semesters, have similar modules with similar topics, but depending whether you're studying industrial, pharma, or general biotechnology, the second part of the studies is what differentiates between these different degree programs within biotechnology. And it also kind of gets more specific in the second part than in the early semesters, so that you focus on the main areas of the studies itself and not just the basics from different disciplines, which I am going to say again are just as important as the later parts. And I have to mention that the internship and thesis work and report are obviously in the second part, so there's nothing new. Other than that, seminars, projects, and some sort of learning and writing module for scientific papers and other things like that, and some elective subjects uh, are mostly included in the second part of your degree program. This rule may sound frightening and extremely difficult, but done step by step, it is possible and a majority of the students who have this rule go through it and get through this transition from the first into the second phase. And point of this video was to make you understand this classification and not to scare you off. And remember, not every state in Germany has this rule for biotechnology. Some obviously do have this rule in place and some don't. There are other fields where this rule is a must. For example, uh, law degree programs, sometimes engineering fields like uh, mechatronics, uh, lectureships, etc. But for biotechnology, it depends on your state and your university. And sometimes you do have this rule, sometimes you don't. You just have to look into the program. And if you're not sure, just ask your university. We could discuss this rule in more depth and talk more about uh, other rules in place for biotech bachelor's degree program. But I think that's enough on this rule and for other difficulties that biotech and other students here in Germany face because of a rule or a set of rules might require more time than just a couple of minutes. So we will leave that for another day. I hope you got some information out of this video and I hope you understood the rule and purpose of this rule. Let me know in the comment section if you have further questions about this rule or structure of biotechnology bachelor's degree program. I will try to answer your questions as soon as I can. So that's been it for this video. I wanna thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos on biotechnology and I'll see you guys in the next video.